Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Kairos Luminary High School um, broadcast. We're re-recording it. Um, for those of you that weren't able to join us in person last night, uh, we know that um, some of the audio was a little bit messed up, so we are doing a cleaner version for you today. Um, really appreciate you tuning in and learning more about our Kairos Luminary Academy High School. Um, we know a lot of our Kairos families have been waiting for this moment. We know the Vacaville community is waiting for this moment. Um, and we're excited to share with you the work that we're doing and continuing to do as we build out the launch of this new innovative high school for August of 2024, um, just about six months away. So while we jump into this really quickly, we're going to tell you who we are. Um, so I'm Jared Austin. I'm the co-founder and executive director of Kairos Public Schools. Hi, everyone. I am Leslie Shebley. I'm one of the co-founders of Kairos and also the Flex Space Coordinator. All right. And we're going to be talking through you all of the, the different ins and outs of the Kairos Luminary Academy High School. Um, really appreciate as we've been kind of on a tour of talking with our current eighth graders, our parent advisory council, community leaders on really what they would like to see. Um, we'll talk to you today about kind of what we've developed so far and what's in the works and getting ready for all of it in just a few months. So we want to start off with Mythbusters. And this is uh, something that we've been hearing, again, on the tour of telling people about this, um, making this vision turn into a reality. And so Leslie's going to kick us off with, miss, with the big Mythbuster that's out there. So in our recon with um, the high school and just talking to families and parents and people, one of the things we're hearing is because this is a flex based or a hybrid high school, um, many people think, oh, this is homeschooling. It's a homeschooling program, kind of like KISP is our current K-8 homeschooling program. <laughs> and so that's the way that they understand it. But we just want to say, as this slide shows, um, KLA is not a homeschooling program. Now, if you're a homeschooler and you like a homeschooling model, there is a, a, an avenue in the KLA model that will allow you to get more of that in an independent study um, sort of pathway. And we're going to go over that in, or in depth soon. But we just want to make sure that everyone listening realizes that this is just a different way of combining all worlds into uh, completing high school. And we're going to go in depth into all that shortly, but that's the main thing that we're hearing about the program is that it's homeschool. And we just want to say it's actually not. So what we are going to talk to you about today is we're going to review the vision and mission. Um, we are going to get into the nuts and bolts of the academic program and what that looks like. Um, answer questions regarding facilities and then extracurricular activities as well. That's a big um, thing with our students and parents just wondering what extracurriculars we're gonna have. And then we're gonna go over some questions and answers, which basically we'll, we'll go over some of the common questions that have been coming up, maybe some of the questions that were posed from people that were in person last night, and then share those answers with you today. So the, we're gonna start off with the vision and mission. And the vision is through the implementation of a rigorous standards-based educational program with high expectations of all stakeholders, students, parents, and staff at, and, um, at Kairos Public Schools is committed to instilling a lifelong love of learning to prepare students for an indeterminate future. So if you've been at Kairos before, this has been our vision for over the last 10 years. Um, many of you I stood in front of 10 years ago and said, I have no idea the high demand jobs that will be here 10 years from now. What well, we believe that if we can prepare your students to be critical thinkers, responsible citizens, self-directed um, communicators and leaders and effective communicators, then they'll be successful in whatever jobs they have in the future. Um, that's still true today. Um, we had no idea 10 years ago that 
artificial intelligence and AI was going to be taking over the world and doing work for us and all of these different things. We had no idea that a the workforce was going to change and go to more of a flex-based model or hybrid model of work uh, with some days in person, some days not. Um, so we are still committed to preparing your students for the indeterminate future. And then that focuses on laying the foundation for success at prestigious four-year colleges, universities, and beyond. It may not be that every one of your students wants to go to college or will go to college, but we believe by preparing your students with these life skills, they will be prepared for whatever their indeterminate future holds for them. We also believe that this is another Kairos moment. And so Kairos is, those of you that have been around Kairos, is a Greek word that means an opportune moment in time. So Kairos is different than the word Kronos, which is more like a clicking clock uh, that we all look at our watches or our phones to see. Kron uh, Kairos is a time within a time. It's considered a favorable time or a season or a window or an opportunity. And so many of you 10 years ago, joined us for a Kairos moment of launching the school and becoming founding families. And our original TK families that we launched with are now going to be going into ninth grade and have the opportunity again for this favorable time, this season, or this opportune window um, to join us as we lay the foundation and roll out this high school opportunity. So again, this, this is that opportune moment that we're excited to share more about. And that leads us into the mission. The mission is you're still a part of Kairos Public Schools. So the mission of Kairos Public Schools remains the same. Each of our academies then has an academy specific mission. So the Luminary Academy is that it will develop pathways and partnerships to prepare the next generation of leaders to be lifelong problem solvers who will serve their global community. So service has always been a part of what we do at Kairos. Yes, we have high academic scores and we've been very successful over many years across all of our programs, but we believe that if we don't teach our students to serve the communities, they could be the smartest kids in the world, but they have a, a poor character and they're not going to make the world a better place. So we're looking for doors of opportunity, pathways and partnerships for your students, we're going to talk about the specific pathways that we're starting with, with biotechnology, public safety, and the graduation requirement of financial literacy. But there's going to be more doors of opportunity and more pathways and more partnerships that we developed. Those of you that joined us or know our history of over the last 10 years know that we started with just a few brave people taking a stand. And we've been able to develop into what we have today with two different campuses and 27 acres of land to continue to build on and serve this community. Those are all walking through doors of opportunity. And so we're excited to help your students figure out their pathways and help bring partnerships to them that's going to open up doors of opportunity for them. So now we're going to pivot to Leslie, who's going to talk about our academic program and give you some of the nuts and bolts. So a lot of people are wondering, okay, that's all great. We love the mission. We love the vision. We love Kairos, but what does this program that you guys are talking about, this flex-based hybrid program, what does it actually look like? So I'm going to take you through step-by-step step and just kind of allow the slides to build so that you hopefully grasp um, the different components of what we want to offer. So the first thing I want to define is the role of an academic advisor. You're going to hear me mention the academic advisor advisor a few times. Um, this is what we call uh, currently our KISP teachers. They are academic advisors. They have caseloads of students. So in this way, it does overlap with a homeschool or independent study program. Um, but these academic advisors are credentialed teachers that are paired up with scholars um, and they are basically their person. They are their main point person. They are their teacher of record. They're the one they're gonna meet with monthly, which we'll talk about that. They'll help uh, along with our guidance counselor because we will also have a guidance counselor just like any other high school does for college, career readiness and making sure all the boxes are being ticked for high school. We will be providing 
that as well. And so the advisor will be working with the counselor to make sure that your student is getting work completed and fulfilling their high school graduation requirements. Uh, and so we'll talk a little bit more about what that academic advisor role looks like, but I just want you to kind of know what that is um, and what the definition is there. Okay, so in a nutshell, you've heard us say this is a flex model. Um, so our flex-based educational model allows for personalization and student choice regarding how they complete their high school courses. So we all know that, uh, well, mo most some people may not know, um, but there's many ways to complete high school. And our goal in this flex model is to provide kind of the best of all worlds in one and provide a couple of different ways to combine as well as to accomplish high school. as And in addition to um, just having all of the typical high school experiences that many kids look forward to, like sports, clubs, dances, school activities. And we'll talk about all of that and extracurriculars in depth later. But right now I wanna focus on what the academic portion looks like. <clears throat> so one of the options that students would have and families would have is the independent study model. So this is probably a little more in line with what some people may be thinking with regard to this program. It's a little bit more what some might consider homeschool. Once we get to high school with students, it, it's less homeschooling and more independent study. The only time it's really referred to um, as homeschooling when it's high school is if a, a family files a private school affidavit or just does it themselves. They're not associated with any school or charter or program. They just do it themselves. And they people can do that. Many parents shy away from that in high school for lots of different reasons. Um, but this is kind of the closest version of that. The independent study option will essentially allow that they will still have a credential teacher academic advisor, but these students will complete most of their work away from our center, away from the Luminary Learning Center. Um, that could be through book-based options, virtual online options, or maybe even attending Solano Community College classes, which we'll talk about soon. Um, and this a specific track can participate in up to two center-based classes at a time. We're going to talk about center-based classes, which kind of comes more in with the hybrid college model that you see here. But this one, they cannot attend any at all and just do everything virtual, everything book-based, everything through Solano, however they choose, and just make it something where they're like, I just want to get this done. I've got other things I'm doing. Maybe you have a student athlete that's really involved in outside sports. They're traveling. We've worked with actors and models and things like that. And then sometimes just students who want to do things on their own. For them, it's not about being in the classroom. They just want to get it done. And this is that venue in vain for them. If you hop over to the right side of the screen, um, then there's the hybrid college model. This one's going to take some more explaining, and I have a specific slide on each of these to go more in depth, so just bear with us. So these scholars are literally choosing the way that they want to complete college, and most of their classes, or at least three or more, would be taken at our center. So they would what we call center-based classes. Both of these options include virtual options, especially in our first year, even for those choosing the college or hybrid model, uh, we're working on offering as many electives as possible. Um, and we have a few that are already in play, but we're still working on some of that. So uh, there will have to be some virtual things that your student does in this first year, and we can talk more about that. But um, just know that the virtual options kind of straddles the fence in both of these models. And we'll go a little more in depth now. So to talk a little bit more about the independent study model, essentially these students are assigned to a credentialed teacher or an academic advisor. They're going to choose from book-based or virtual cur curriculum options that we provide. It's all provided. Um, as I mentioned, they may even choose Solano classes. Um, in fact, both the flex-based hybrid model as well as the independent study can choose this, and we'll talk more about that. But this is as something, so they may not come to center classes, but they may choose to take a class at Solano Community College or maybe a virtual class online through them. Um, and that's called concurrent enrollment um, with a college. And it's available to any high school student, but really fits into a model like what we're doing with independent study uh, flex space because they actually have the time to do it. So uh, from there, with their advisor, there's a personalized learning plan um, created based on the curriculum choices. Scholars complete all their work at home or just on the go, depending on what your their lifestyle is and your family's lifestyle is. Um, 
they are required to meet at least monthly uh, with their advisor to turn and work and go over things to make sure everything is on the right track. They will also be doing weekly check-ins. That could be a phone call. They may see them here. They may come in anyways. Uh, they may take part of their virtual office hours, that kind of thing. Um, and they'll turn in their assigned work. Um, and again, these these folks, these kiddos can take up to two center-based courses. So they may say, you know what, I really want to be in person for science because that's a challenge for me. I want to make sure I, I understand. I don't really want to take it at the college. That, that kind of intimidates me a little. So I'll attend science, the science offering at the at Luminary Center. Um, and then they might want to be involved in our our planning for student leadership and all of our extracurriculars and things that we're, I'm going to go into soon. And they may want to be involved in that. So they're going to join the Scholar Ambassador Student Leadership course, which is also an elective, which they receive credits for it, and they meet once a week. So they're going to do those two things here, but everything else they're going to do virtually or through a book-based curriculum pre-approved by us or um, one of those things. So that's, again, it gives them just a more, more independence, which is why it's called independent study. Now, this is the model that most people, I think, are the most confused over. They don't fully grasp it because we really don't, there's nowhere around here that actually offers um, anything even close to this. And nothing, uh, we have a few um, types of independent study programs that offer a few classes, but nothing similar to this. So this is our college-like model. Um, it's a hybrid model, meaning they're going to be on-site some days and off-site some days. Um, it's naturally flex-based. So it's in-person and virtual offerings, as I mentioned. Um, scholars are going to select at least three center-based classes. So if we, um, if they look and they say, you know what, I actually want to take all my core classes on site. Um, and I'm going to show you what a sample schedule looks like in just a minute so that you will understand that. But I am going to... Um, take at least all my course. So I'm going to take my English, I'm going to take my math, science, history, and I'm going to do it on site with their offerings. And then the rest of my elective stuff, I'm going to take virtually. I'm going to take one through Imagine Learning Ingenuity, which is one of the learning platforms that we have and we'll be offering with A to G courses. And uh, we'll talk about A to G also. Um, so most of them in the first year will likely be taken virtually or maybe through Solano. Again, we're still working on the elective offerings. We wanted to make sure we get those core classes offered first. Um, they still are going to have an academic advisor because that academic advisor in an independent study model is their teacher of record. Even if they have their credentialed math teacher, their credentialed English teacher, where they're taking a core um, on-site course or center-based course that is guiding them through all the curriculum doing it, their teacher of record is still their academic advisor. And that's where it's just a little different than what people are used to in a traditional high school model. It's not really going to make any difference to them or even to you as a parent. It's more on our end, and that's the way independent study works. So it's nothing to be concerned or confused about. They'll still have subject-specific support, and I'll go into that as well. So in this model, parents are not assigning or grading any work. So for those of you who are intimidated by the concept of maybe a little more of an independent study model where there may be a little more parent involvement, although still not the same as if you were homeschooling a third grader, um, there may be a little bit more in the independent study model. In this model, you're not doing any of that. It's based on their academic advisor working with them and the teachers, the subject-specific teachers assigning work and grading it and teaching them, et cetera. So this is kind of where the parents were like, I really don't feel comfortable doing that. And yet I really like Kairos and this flex-based model is interesting. This is probably where you want to live in this model here. Hybrid scholars, again, will also have the uh, academic advisor. Well, they will have to check in weekly with them in the form of a homeroom, which you'll see kind of how that fits into a schedule and have um, a monthly uh, meeting as well that's a little more in depth. Okay, so let's talk about Sally Salamander. Sally is a ninth grader. And just for the sake of giving everyone an idea of what this looks like what could a potential schedule weekly schedule for my kid who's a ninth grader coming into Kayla what could it look like if I wanted them to be on site more than they were off site what could it look like so if you see on the far right I have enrolled class courses their core courses for ninth grade are I am one which is integrative math English nine and earth science 
Um, and their electives are college career exploration and scholar ambassador. Now, college and career exploration is one of the electives that we are going to require our first year students take because it kind of lays the groundwork for the pathways that we offer, as well as just getting their feet wet on, hey, let's start thinking about life after high school. Um, we're working on this being a dual enrollment course with Solano College. Uh, we're trying to tick those boxes now, so it would give them college credit as well as high school credit. And we'll talk about dual enrollment more as well. But then also you can see that Sally has a virtual course. Um, she has to fulfill her foreign language requirement. So she's taking Spanish one and she's taking it, let's say, through Edgenuity, uh, which is an online learning platform. Uh, Buckingham also uses Edgenuity and it's something that we use at KISP for our middle schoolers and it goes through high school. Um, so you can see she, it's truly a flex-based schedule, but she's on site more. So if you start with Mondays, maybe it's the, the week of the month where she needs to meet with her academic advisor that month. So she's on Monday going to go meet with her academic advisor for an hour and attend her monthly meeting. And then um, we go into kind of the more on-site days. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can see in blue at the top, it says on-site. So Tuesday and Thursday are very similar to each other. This is when Sally is going to take her one hour or I guess it's 55 minutes um, integrated math course where she's going to receive instruction just as she would if she were enrolled in a high school and doing a block schedule. Um, this is kind of like a block schedule. And then from there, she's going to head into English on both Tuesday and Thursday, English 9, where she will receive instruction. And then um, there will be a lunch break time. And then after lunch, she's going to head into earth science. And those are her main kind of core courses. Well, from there, because it's a flex schedule, Sally can technically um, head home if she says, hey, I don't really need any extra help. I know I've got other work to do. I'm fine with heading home around one o'clock. And that works for your family. And she's going to get any other work that she has uh, that she needs done at home. But if if Sally wants to be on site more and she wants to work around her her other friends and things, she can come to, let's say, on Tuesday, a study hall. And that study hall happens to be directed as a math lab. So we have our credential math teacher in there offering support and help to those who need it. And who those who don't need math help at that moment, they can be working on other things. Sally can be plugging away at her Spanish one virtual course. She can be working on other assigned work from English or science during that time. And then at three o'clock, she's officially out and done and she heads home just like any other high school student. The same thing happens on Thursday, except that one to three times study hall is just isn't really directed other than it's just focused on electives. So she has more to do because she has daily assignments in her Spanish online. She has work assigned from her other classes. So she's getting it done just as she would get done any other homework, but there will still be a teacher in study hall. So if she's struggling and needs support, needs some help or has a question, she can get that help from that teacher. Now on Wednesdays, it's also an on-site day, but it's a little different. She doesn't have her core courses assigned, but she has her homeroom where she meets with her academic advisor along with other kiddos who are on that list um, or on that caseload for that advisor. So um, she meets with them and maybe turns in work samples that she needs or uploads them. We're going to have a system for that very easily done. Uh, and it's just a 30-minute homeroom. And then from her homeroom, she heads into the career exploration elective that all students are taking. And remember, all these center-based classes are taken with other students doing the exact same thing, just as they would be in any other high school class. And after her career exploration, she heads into scholar ambassador or student leadership because she's really interested in building the culture at Luminary. They want to plan events and pep rallies and dances and all of those things. And so she really wants to be involved in that. And so her and her, her counterparts sit and they plan, obviously, with a teacher and they plan all of these things and, and help out, just like any other student would in student leadership at any other high school. She then has a lunch break. And then after lunch, she's able to head into study hall if she wants to. And this study hall on Wednesday is directed study hall. So it's a writing one. 
So the English teacher is in their overseeing study hall and they're helping any student specifically with writing. But if Sally doesn't need help with any writing or any English work, she is free to work on other things just as she would at any other study hall. So there's plenty of support, plenty of access to knowledgeable, credentialed teachers in this model. Um, we had one of the questions last night as well. Is it enough to have, you know, two hours in a week um, to teach something like math? Because in a traditional model, many kids are going five days a week to math. Uh, but some high schools do a block schedule and they only have two to three hours a week in a classroom environment is not difficult. These teachers know what they're doing. They can give them the instruction and then they get maybe Google Classroom assignments just as they would in many other high schools. And they complete those assignments based on what they've learned in their class time. So that's just an overview. Um, you can continue. I'm sure you've been perusing this as I talk, but I just wanted to give you a mental picture of what a hybrid-like model looks like. Now, Sally wanted to be involved in as much as she could be um, so this is her schedule. Maybe your student says, well, I don't feel like I need to be there all day, three days a week like Sally is. I only want to go for math and science. That's fine. Your students can do math and science. And maybe since they're only two, choosing two core, they're in the independent study model, but still doing their core work in math and science at the center. However, they may say, I want math and science and I'm doing career exploration and I want scholar ambassadors. So they're a hybrid student because they've got four courses, but they're completing English virtually because they feel like they can, or maybe they chose to do it at Solano Community College. And then again, they're taking maybe a Spanish or a music course to fulfill those other electives that they choose. So it can be, um, it can be a different kind of schedule based on the courses and the way the student wants to take them. So I think that that's important. In a college model, you have options these days. You can take your classes virtually. You can go in person. You can do daytime, nighttime. And while we don't offer nighttime classes, and we probably won't for everyone's sake, um, it still gives you freedom and flexibility on how things are accomplished while still give it, getting all of the boxes ticked for graduation. And one thing to add, um, because this came up in questions from eighth graders, is that, you know, do they, with this model, does this mean with all the flexibility that I can choose to only do my math on Tuesdays, or if I have to do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays? And like Leslie said, this is a college model. So just like college models, it's a semester long commitment. So you're expected to come to the class as it's assigned in its block schedule on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so if you don't come, then you could end up, you know, being removed from the class and then you may not have the option of doing the hybrid college model. You might only have the option of doing the independent study model that Leslie defined earlier. So really these are, again, a semester long college class. And our job is to going back to the mission and vision is prepare them for the for college and this commitment and schedule does just that. Okay, a little more on our virtual options. So I've mentioned that we have a variety of ways that we're going to offer virtual courses. So Arizona State University is someone that we're working with and partnering with to offer a high school level courses. Imagine learning at Genuity. I, um, I mentioned that as well. And uh, we're very familiar with that already. I personally worked in it in a high school model, a high school independent study model, and it can be very great. It's rigorous. Um, and uh, it's actually a really great program in many ways. Um, they can also take Solano Community College classes as a concurrent enrollment student. Um, they can take virtual courses that way. Um, as, and we're going to be working, and some of our teachers that we've already brought on are working on creating and honing their own curriculum content that could also be potentially used as a virtual model. So that's something that we're working on. So all of these virtual options are still overseen by their assigned academic advisor. They're monitored and graded by them. I want to say the one caveat for the independent study model is if you choose the independent study model, what well, your scholar does, and they have book-based curriculum that we are offering, and they're completing that at home, there is more involvement, I mentioned that already, by the parent, because there will be some expectation and requirement requirements of 
the parent grading some assigned work because the student will be doing it at home and therefore will need more immediate feedback. Now, the, the academic advisor will still be the one implementing any tests or exams or all of that, but the parent will be a little more involved if you choose book-based curriculum. And there's nothing wrong with it at all. It just depends on the model that you want. Some parents are fine with that. Others say, I don't want to do that at all. I don't want to be responsible for that. Then you would not choose book-based options. Uh, we also, as a school in general, especially for older scholars, we will issue devices as well as Wi-Fi if needed. Um, but we will have Chromebooks available for students to check out and use for any virtual and class work. All right, let's talk graduation requirements. Getting ready with high school, you uh, are going to have a graduation where in eighth grade for the last 10 years you had promotion okay you're going into high school we're going to be graduating some students in just a few years and there's all kinds of different requirements that we're going to talk about um today there's a to g requirements and we'll talk about kind of what those are um there's a traditional diploma um that you can go on and then for some through this college model with dual enrollment and concurrent enrollment options um, some high school students may end up graduating with their AA degree and their high school diploma at the same time. So let's jump into kind of what that looks like. So this is the Kairos Luminary graduation requirements. Um, if you go to our website, um, kairosluminaryacademy.org, uh, um, we'll have it right there on the homepage. And so on the Left-hand side, you'll see that these are the subject areas um, that are part of the graduation requirements. And then in the kind of middle section, it talks about the California state um, high school graduation requirements. Now, these are minimum requirements that have to be met in order to get that high school diploma um, as defined by the state of California. So they have like one level. And then the University of California has defined A to G requirements. And so those are more rigorous requirements that are making sure that students are ready for college. So you'll see that the California state requirements might have, have three years of English that's required. So that essentially means they can take English their ninth grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade year, but not take uh, English, their 12th grade year. Well, the University of California in meeting the A to G requirements doesn't believe that that is good in order to be college ready. And so they have four years as a requirement. So again, more rigorous. So when, if you look to the far right, the KPS is the Kairos requirements for graduation. And so you'll see that they pretty much align with the A to G requirements because every single student that comes to Cairo Solonair Academy will be on the default pathway and courses the advisors and the guidance counselor will be putting you on to meet the A to G requirements. Um, so if a student says, no, I don't want to do the A to G requirements, you know, maybe I only want to um, do a couple years of the science or the math, and they can opt out of the A to G pathway, but the default is to opt them in. And the reason is because students' brains change and develop so much, especially going from eighth grade when they're, you know, ninth grade and all the way to their senior year and really don't stop developing until they're at least 25. Um, we want students to start off on the pathway that prepares them most for success and being college ready is is that again they may choose not to go to college they may choose to do a trade or do something else and that is totally fine we will support them with that indeterminate future but if they are on the default pathway to college ready a to g it opens up their doors to more opportunities to where if they weren't following that path and they decided later on in their junior year or senior year, it might be too late. And then they end up having to go to Solano or another community college to make up some classes before they're ready to go into the University of California system, which again, there's no shame, no judgment with that. I personally did that with going to Solano too. 
Um, but again, we, we want to open up as many doors of opportunities. And again, those Kairos moments as much as we can. So looking at this, Kairos has a few different specific graduation requirements that we put in place that is different than the state and different than even the A to G requirements. So for instance, one of the things that sets us apart is being one of only 10 schools in the state of California to require financial literacy as a graduation requirement. And that's at least one semester, which is considered the gold standard. And there's been about 23 states in the nation that have adopted having this gold standard one semester financial literacy course be a graduation requirement. California has not done so. There's been some legislative traction the last few years, but it's died in the legislators the last um, couple years. I don't know why. Um, I do anticipate in the future it will come up again. But the idea is that every student will have at least one semester. And again, we hope to offer even more courses in this. Um, but the minimum will be one semester that every student will have to take in order to meet the graduation requirement. And again, this is to set them up best for success. So no matter what industry they're a part of, their future careers, if they know how to manage their, their money, then they're going to be able to be successful. A recent statistic said that the average American only has $450 in their savings account. That's something that that's a generational thing that we want to break. And we want the new generation of students coming out specifically from Kairos to have much more money in their accounts and know how to manage their money in a much better way. Another requirement that Kairos has is the community service. This, this is who we are. So we, again, we talked about in our vision statement and our mission statement about serving the community. That's who we've been for many years. And 10 years ago, we said every middle schooler is going to take three years of community service at our Elm campus because they will, by the time they graduate, if they continue with that life skill and, and being a responsible citizen, they will have seven years of community service experience so that when they apply to college, they will stand out to the ones who only took a semester long community service class their senior year in high school because they wanted to look good to a college. Well, it's getting harder and harder to get into those prestigious universities. So having uh, a lot more years of experience on their record will help them open up more doors of opportunity, which again, this is what this whole thing is about is opening up their doors of opportunity. So, You'll see here, you can analyze it more on the website. We align more with the A to G requirements and then adding in the financial literacy, which is not required of A to G, um, makes us a little bit more unique and different than any of the schools around. So let's talk a little bit about public safety, biotech, uh, and our career pathways. So we are going to start with two distinct career pathways um, in public safety and biotech. Um, these came out of strategic planning conversations with our local community leaders. Vacaville and Solano County is known for public safety and biotech. This does not mean that every student that comes to Luminary Academy is going to be required to do these pathways. Um, they, Like Leslie mentioned earlier, all of our students will be able to do the, um, the career exploration where we're really just trying to expose the students to different industry sectors to get them interested. And so public safety and biotechnology will be a part of that. Um, and then it will be up to the students if they want to select further courses in the public safety pathway or biotechnology pathway. If your student wants to come to us and they just want to follow the general educational plan, or maybe a, it's another pathway that we develop as we build out this program, they are more than welcome to do that. These are just the two distinct pathways that we're starting with because that's what the community leaders wanted to see is something that we're developing a pipeline into these careers which serve our local community. Um, and then I mentioned the graduation requirement on the last slide of financial literacy. Um, it is a graduation requirement. There's a lot of people saying, oh, it's a it's a pathway. 
Um, there will be a pathway that comes with this. And we already are offering a pathway with our middle school students at the Elm campus that are taking Miss Courtney's class. This will feed into the high school class and they will be able to be completers of a pathway if they're coming from Elm into our um, Luminary Academy um, because of the financial literacy background that they're learning over there. And there will be more classes that we add as we continue to build out the program. But again, every student will be required to take at least one semester class before they graduate um, from Luminary Academy in financial literacy. So let's, let's pivot over to facilities. Where is this going to be? And this is a, a fun topic. Um, those of you that are with us, um, when we uh, launched the school 10 years ago, may remember in info meetings that I said, you know, we might be in the back of we'll see wood, it's some portables, or we might be in a church, or there's this 75-year-old campus that homeless people are currently inhabiting. Uh, maybe we'll be there. Uh, we ended up on that campus. That's the Elm campus. And then uh, we have built out a lot in 10 years. Now we own 27 acres off of Leisure Town, where our Kairos Innovative Scholars pathway is currently residing. And we have 26 acres left to build on. And that is where the future facilities of Kairos are going. So this is where I'm going to bring this down. Let's see if we can bring this picture down and represent um because that didn't work um now we can see it a little bit better um we're going to talk about what our master plan is looking like so this um that you're seeing in front of you is on the left hand side that is 11 acres that we own um at the brian landing site we have 16 additional acres to the south um down below um the ball fields that will be for future development as well. So at the top right of kind of the, the drawings, that's our current KISS building. So that's where our um, Innovative Scholars Pathway currently resides. And then you'll see on the left in yellow, we have a future high school building. This is where the high school building, which will be similar to the Innovative Scholars building, but bigger. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to, We'll be. <laughs> we're all going to wait for this announcement to end. Until we're in an <laughs> office. Congratulations to this week's winner. Please come to the front desk and claim your prize. Well, congratulations, we, winners. <laughs> we do know the intercom system works here at the Innovative Scholars Pathway. Thanks for bearing with us, folks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what I was saying is in the yellow is going to be the future high school building. Um, obviously, that will not be built by August. So what we have in blue down below is modular classrooms that are going to be put in place that we're currently working with the city of Vacaville on. Um, and getting all the permits and construction starting very soon that will be ready for August. And that will have modular classrooms, a brand new modular classrooms. So similar to what um, classrooms that our students experience in middle school over at the Leadership Academy, but they're not going to be 40-year-old portables. They'll be brand new. And they'll be the temporary housing where we're holding all of these center-based classes um, until we build out the next phase. Now, we are essentially a small business, and so just as we had to raise the funds to um, build out the KISS building, buy the land, and do all the things, um, the bank wants to see us have operational experience in high school before they'll give us the funds to build this permanent building. So our hope is that as all of you join us in this Kairos moment and launch the school is that in a year from now, we'll be able to start the process of building this permanent building and we'll only be in the modulars for a very short time. Um, obviously, we've been successful at building our own buildings. You'll see down at the bottom right, the current Innovative Scholars campus, which will have some shared facilities in this high school model, um, but then the high school will also have its own classrooms and, and common spaces as well. 
So this is the future. And then for those of you that were wondering, um, it also has designs on this land. You can see for a gymnasium with building C, another K-8 campus in the future. And then it has soccer fields and baseball fields and all things that are coming as we continue to build out and partner with all of you to make this dream a reality. So now we're gonna talk about extracurricular activities and Leslie will kind of jump in on this part. Another one of our big um, questions that we're getting from families and scholars alike is, uh, we love Kairos, but are you guys gonna be able to offer the sports and the dances and all the things that kids do look forward to in high school? And our answer is yes, we just don't know to what extent quite yet. Because if you think about sports, I'll go to the, our another slide. If you think about sports, specifically sports, is you have to have athletes. So our plan on the sports front, we have a lot of coaches who are saying, hey, I can do basketball, I can do football, I can do soccer, I can do baseball, whatever. And that's great. But we need to make sure that we actually have kids to fill teams. Now, we are planning on starting small. As most of you already know, we're starting with ninth and 10th grade only. And we want to start small because we want to build something sustainable. We want it to be quality. And then we want to slowly work our way up. So if we're starting with 60, 70, 75 students, potentially, um, not all of those are going to be athletes. And maybe we have a lot of athletes, but they're in all different sorts of sports. So the plan is once we do, uh, if a lottery is needed, once we do our lottery, we offer the spots, um, which will be toward the end of March. People accept those spots. Then we send out a survey to those people who've accepted the spots, say, I'm coming in August. We say, okay, that's awesome. We want to see what kind of sports your child is interested. Are they interested at all? Maybe you have a, a runner and they're interested in cross country. Um, that's actually a pretty easy sport to put together. Um, maybe we have enough for a basketball team. We are going to be working to get into CIF, which we will likely be competing once we do that against other small schools. Um, potentially similar for those of you who know Becker Christian School, Buckingham, that kind of thing. Um, we will likely, if we had sports teams like a freshman team or a JV team at some point, we would be able to compete against those schools. Um, we made the point last night to say we're not going to be a Division One sports school very likely, uh, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have it. Just as we have sports and have had sports for many years in our middle school, but some of those sports haven't come until recently, while others have been since the beginning, uh, year one, 10 years ago. So we're planning on having some sports, but we just don't know which ones until we know who we're getting and what we can um, outfit with regard to a team. So hopefully that makes sense. With regard to the other pieces, our student leadership or our scholar ambassadors, um, they will be kind of uh, leading and dictating what they want, what we can help with, what clubs do they want to have. So those are student led, overseen by obviously an adult teacher. Um, but just as any school, they they would be student-led if they're interested in a drama club or if they're interested in a robotics club. If a student's interested and they have a couple friends, they want to do it, they can form that club and we can have those. Um, the dances and the pep rallies and all the things, we will start as a small school. So some of those may look a little different, but in the one sense, it'll be nice because these students, these founding students for Luminary will have the ability to shape what comes in the future. And that's really important because think about these freshman students coming in who say, hey, this is what we want. And then four years later, they're going to be seniors and there's going to be freshmen coming in and they're going to get to benefit from what these scholars have built. So it's just another way for our kids to get involved, to have a voice in their education and what happens. Um, and that's what we want to do. So it's pretty much going to be dependent on what's doable with um, a smaller number of students as well as what the scholars want and how can we make that work we are going to obviously we're we've always proud uh, are proud of our families and our parents involvement and in any high school parent involvement definitely goes down and we know that um, but we really hope that our families coming in, whether they're continuing Kairos families who know that DNA or new families who've never attended Kairos or other Kairos programs before, that they will jump on board and say, hey, 
We're not going to be here every day necessarily, but we want to get involved as much as we can. We're going to join the Cairo Parent Advisory Council, and we're going to help out with some of these things so that our kids have quality options. And so that's what we're hoping to see from parents as well. Yeah, and I'll also just hone in on the athletes part. You know, just like we mentioned, we probably won't be on a D1 or D2 school, but if you're a good athlete, it just means you're going to get more notice with our students and being part of the smaller leagues and uh, divisions like some of the other schools around us, the private schools or small charter schools as well. So there's lots of opportunities for more playing time, more notice, and just more activities. The flex space model really lends itself to students not just being in classes seven hours a day, five days a week, while they'll still get that experience and be with friends and have the social piece, as well as the academics, they have more freedom and flexibility. They have Mondays and Fridays where they may not be necessarily attending a class, maybe unless they take a Solano class, but they are doing sports, they're pursuing a, a job, they're um, running a small business or whatever their interests are, they have the opportunity to pursue that because they have more time um, that they can do things that their counterparts who are in school from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. or beyond every day don't have. So that could be sports and it could be anything else. So I think it's really important to realize the benefits of a flexible model, just as the benefits of a college model allow students to still work while getting their academics and pursuing their overall life goals. All right, let's talk enrollment timelines. We're almost to the end of this presentation. Um, we have some key dates and a lot of information for you to know. Our open enrollment window um, ends February 29th at 4 p.m. That's the last day of open enrollment, just like all of our academies. Um, the lottery, if it's required, is March 28th at 4 p.m., and then how does the lottery preferences work? So we've heard all kinds of different things from students. Um, the lottery preferences are posted on our website. They're the same across all of the organization. Um, we've heard things about, well, uh, there's this new socioeconomically disadvantaged priority and I don't qualify for that. So does that mean I can't go to the high school? No, that's not true. That is one of our preferences but the, there's also the preference of being a current Cairo student. Um, if you're a current Cairo student, you still have to apply for the um, Luminary High School. It's not just an automatic, you're an eighth grader with us. You can go over to the Luminary Academy. You still have to apply. Um, similar to if you have a younger sibling and they're coming to the one of the academies, you still have to apply. It's not an, an automatic in. So if you haven't applied, make sure you apply by February 29th at 4 p.m. The first day of school is slated to be August 15th. And so we'll be having lots of launch activities the week of August 11th, which will include like career exploration day where we're going to have biotech industry fields out there, medical fields. We'll have public safety sector um people out there, all those different things. And it will be lots of different fun community building activities. Just like we just talked about working with our scholar ambassador, student leadership students. Um, and then there will be more activities that are coming. So there will be a traditional activities calendar that talks about when winter ball is going to be and prom and other back to school bashes and all kinds of different things that are coming that you would expect from any high school culture. And frankly, the Kairos culture that we've developed will all be coming out and more is to come. So lots of exciting things to be on the lookout for. Follow us on social media, on Instagram, um, or you can look at our website and, and be in touch that way. We have a couple questions and answers since we're recording this uh, session. Um, we wanted to pull out a few themes that came out last night with some of the live questions. And one of the questions was, why this model? And Leslie and I went across the state looking for models that would represent what we thought would best prepare students for an indeterminate future. Uh, we went and found this model that we're presenting you today. This is not a unique model to Kairos that we're designing. There's been schools that have been doing this for a very long time. 
Um, and then they just advance and, and do different things. So we went down to like classical academies down in San Diego and, and LA, and we went to Corp Butte up in Chico and, and done different things to look at models. And just like when we launched Kairos 10 years ago, we, we traveled and, and took the best of the different schools and tried to morph it into what would work in our local community. And so we're doing the same thing here is that we found these really innovative models that is not in this area. The closest model that we've been able to find the resemble this is two hours away. So our students can't go to that model. So we said, why can't we bring something like that here and have it be more of a Vacaville Solano flair, hence the public safety and biotech pathways, um, and try to make it to where things are going. 10 years ago, I mentioned, we didn't have as much people that worked hybrid remote workforce schedules. And what does that look like? And how can we prepare students? If our job is to prepare them for an indeterminate future, and we know a growing trend is that millions and millions of uh, people in the United States are starting to work more and more remote or have hybrid schedules. How can we prepare our young adults for that model? And so that that's why we did it is we feel like this is the, the trend of the future and it's giving them that college model experience, workforce model experience and flexibility to be innovative and entrepreneurs by not being in a conveyor belt high school system that has students there five days a week for six to seven hours a day, this is going to provide them more time to pursue their passions and open up those doors and fulfill the mission um, that, that we see with this academy. The next question, and I'll let Leslie uh, address this one, is the uniforms and we're getting this a lot will there be uniforms we're getting this a lot from our on-site leadership academy kiddos and no there won't be uniforms yes we will have an overall dress code just like kiss paths in the sense that there's appropriate wear and inappropriate wear but we will not have uniforms as um, our on-site academies do we did that for specific reasons but once you get into high school and you're dealing with uh, a program that you're really trying to promote um, not necessarily individuality, but just your own um, independence, as well as respect for yourself and each other. So there will be common sense um, dress code things, but not a, not a formal uniform uh, way of dressing. Yeah, and the last question we wanted to kind of address is, you know, will there be internships and different job placement opportunities? And the answer is yes. So working with the biotech fields and biotech support organizations and industries that are popping up all over Vacaville, there'll be opportunities there. There'll be opportunities in financial sectors, whether it's in banking or other institutions um, and then public safety pathways and doing explorer programs or cadet programs um, all of those things to build in the pipeline so those are again some of the flexibility of what this program brings this maybe on mondays when you have more remote time or fridays while everyone else is in school and uh, in the conveyor belt system you will your student will have the opportunity to do different internships and have more exposure and different job placements and all of that is what we're going to be continuing to build out as we develop these partnerships and pathways and most forward. of these are going to come um later on in high school you're not necessarily going to be sending a freshman into an internship but as we build into their junior and senior year, especially those kids who say hey i'm really interested in this field whether it's the ones we're starting with or the ones we create later, um, that's kind of where that comes into play. And those relationships built goes a long way. So we want to thank you all for joining us. Um, if you joined us for the the live in-person live stream or in person, um, we apologize for the audio issues um, originally, but thank you for hanging with us. Thank you for watching this. Uh, make sure you again apply by February 29th. And if you have questions, you could always reach out to us, look at our website, um, email us, and follow us on social media. So thank you and appreciate all of you.